Schwing. Schwing. Did you know that this Valentine's Day will mark the 25th anniversary of Wayne's World? Man, we are right out of the gate with a bonus thing you didn't know today. Anyway, this anniversary is a great excuse for us to celebrate Wayne's World instead of doing that episode of It's Pat like we planned. Have a nice day. Maybe next time, Pat. Here are nine things you didn't know about Wayne's World. Probably. I think we'll go with a little Bohemian Rhapsody, gentlemen. Good call. One of the first scenes in Wayne's World is also one of its most iconic scenes, Bohemian Rhapsody, which we aren't going to play right now because we can't afford it. Anyway, before going in to film this, Dana Carvey thought he knew all the lyrics to the song, but realized on set pretty quickly that he definitely did not. And since Wayne's World was shot in only 34 days, boom, bonus thing, there wasn't any time for him to go and learn the words. That's why you can plainly see in all of Garth's close-ups that he's faking his way through the song, lip-syncing his best guess of what the real lyrics were, which is the same thing I do anytime I hear Rapper's Delight, which we're also not going to play. We are going to move on, though. One more thing about the Bohemian Rhapsody sequence. Turns out all of that headbanging was not as fun as it looks. Mike Myers and Dana Carvey were both complaining that it was really hurting their necks. The guys in the back seat were fine with it, but it got to the point where Mike Myers didn't even want to do the scene. He was insisting that it wasn't funny and people would never really bang their heads like that. Which probably explains why Wayne's headbanging looks so stiff and weird if you actually pay attention. You guys remember that part with Garth's line about Bugs Bunny and then Wayne starts cracking up? Did you ever find Bugs Bunny attractive when he'd put on a dress and play a girl bunny? No. You probably didn't know that Mike Myers is genuinely <laughs> laughing at something Dana Carvey said. It just didn't make it into the movie. Whatever Dana Carvey said might have been too weird or just not suitable for a PG-13 movie, but they decided to use this take of Mike Myers laughing after Garth's line because, well, if you've got a real laugh in the can, use that. Next thing. Whatever Dana Carvey said that got Mike Myers laughing might have been too blue for the final film, but here's a pretty racy line that still made the cut. Who wants Chinese takeout? I know a great place. I'll have the cream of some young guy. <laughs> now, that line was improvised, and it actually created a big debate over whether the line was even funny, and if they should keep it in the movie. Incidentally, Rob Lowe was one person who really championed keeping the line. But the deciding factor was when they included the joke during a test screening, and the audience laughed so hard at it, they missed the next few lines of dialogue that came afterward. In fact, that's why there's a bit of a pause in the film after Wayne says it. They had to build in some air for the audience's laughter. The moral of the story? Always take comedy advice from Rob Lowe. But just comedy advice. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Most people don't know this, but being the prop guy on Wayne's World was quite possibly the worst job on set. You wouldn't believe how much work went into Garth's room alone. Dana Carvey would have the prop master go through dozens of drafts of every prop trying to figure out what he could get the most mileage out of comedically. Then, after Carvey would finally pick something, Mike Myers would come in with his own notes on each prop. In addition to needing to see multiple versions of the props that were already in the script, Dana Carvey would often come up with ideas for gadgets he thought of on the fly, like the car's licorice dispenser. After all, Garth is based on Dana Carvey's brother, Brad, who is a bit of a real-life MacGyver. Boom, bonus thing you didn't know. The point is, Dana Carvey and Mike Myers were used to being able to work in the chaotic environment of Saturday Night Live, where they were able to revamp entire sketches just a moment before going on the air. Party on, Wayne. <laughs> All right, party on, guys. But movies don't work like that. In the end, they did make it through Wayne's World without anyone on the crew using one of the rejected props as a murder weapon. So it all worked out. Moving on. All of those different versions of the props might have had something to do with a continuity problem in this scene. See that little pink hockey stick straw thing? Cool. Do you see how now it's suddenly a blue hockey stick straw thing? Terrific. Now that I've successfully changed the way you'll be able to watch that scene forever and ever, let's go to our next thing. Wow, what a totally amazing, excellent discovery. Not. When Danny Carvey was busy not learning the lyrics to Bohemian Rhapsody, he was probably busy drumming instead, because he's really playing the drums here in Garth's little fantasy sequence. His drum skills may not impress any of the actual musicians out there, but you've got to admit, he's a pretty great drummer for a comedian. Wow, you're... Amazing, dude. Thanks. I like to play. 
Wayne's World is the most successful movie based on a Saturday Night Live franchise, and by a wide margin. As you probably imagined, Lorne Michaels was a very hands-on producer for the film. But most people don't know that Dana Carvey was very influential in how Rob Lowe played Benjamin. Dana Carvey actually coached Rob Lowe on how to do a Lorne Michaels impression, and if you listen closely, you can hear how Rob Lowe used that impression very subtly in some of Benjamin's speech patterns. No, no, I'm producing a television show. It's in Chicago. Very late night, but we're looking for a musical act. Uh, here's my card. Is there a number where I can reach you at? You hear it? I can totally hear it. What's your deal with not being able to hear it? Come on, it's right there. Let's end on a thing about a snake. Even though it was written into the script that Cassandra was supposed to have a hard time handling the snake here, it turned out Tia Carrere didn't have to do much acting at all in the end. The snake weighed about 80 pounds, so it really was a struggle to deal with it. The snake weighs a ton! It looks great on you! When you add having to hold a guitar and lip sync for the fake music video you're fake shooting on top, well, let's just say I suddenly have a little more respect for Britney Spears. Excuse me? Baking powder? Just kidding. No, I don't. I have less. We hope you guys liked today's nine things for the 90s classic Wayne's World. If you guys want us to do a part two on Wayne's World 2, hit the thumbs up and leave a comment. Thanks for watching and subscribe to Cinefix for more truish things about movies and sometimes comedy tips from Rob Lowe right here on Things You Didn't Know. It might happen. Yeah, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. <laughs>